Uh, we'll be in Psalm 61, and I kind of the name of this is uh, from failure to victory, and it particularly emphasizes that reality in our prayers. And um, so, if you'll take a few seconds to get to Psalm 61, and it's only eight verses, so we're we're going to uh, go down each one of them. Psalm 61, verse 1. Hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. So here we have, <clears throat> we have him in distress. We have the writer concerned. He's crying out. He's not just praying. He's crying out to the Lord. And um, he uses the phrase, um, uh, attend unto my prayer as if God wouldn't attend to it, but he's really, really in this distressful situation. And, um, but you'll notice that uh, two different times within just this first verse that there is um, the same word used twice, and that is my. Hear my cry, attend unto my prayer. And right now, he's focused on his distress, and he's focused on his prayer is going to fix things. His prayer is going to, you know, my prayer, hear my. And he's all wrapped up in the problem, <clears throat> but he's going to God. And, I, and I'm sure that you and I have <laughs> done this many times before. Uh, but uh, there's something to learn from, from Psalm 61. So, um, in verse 2, he says, From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. That means that's when he'll cry unto, unto him, when his heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So, <clears throat> he is, um, again, using the word cry. And uh, there's still this need and this um, sort of, if you will, s a sense of, of desperation involved in that. And, um, and then he mentions where his prayer is located. His prayer is located from the ends of the earth. He's crying out from the earth, probably about the earth, you know, earthly problems earthly people, earthly situations. <clears throat> and um, what does he cry? Well, or why, really? Why does he cry? He cries because his heart is overwhelmed, and that's what the Scriptures say. But he's, he's, he's already mentioned the earth and that that's where he's crying out from. So his heart is overwhelmed in the earth. In the earth. And um, when we get down further down uh, into this psalm, I think we're going to see that part of his problem is in relationship to his vows. He's, he's made some vows to God, and then it sounds like he's failed in those vows, and, and he's in distress about it. And, <clears throat> so, and that's one reason why I've got the title, um, From Failure to Victory, and as I said, particularly in relationship to prayer, because that's that's what he's doing in this psalm. And then he says, um, lead me to the rock that is higher in I, than I. And in, in this part of the verse, of verse 2, he's beginning to make a transition. And this is David, so it doesn't take him long. <laughs> Eight verses and he's in. But... Uh, He's, uh, he's beginning to make a transition, and um, it's just a slight transition, but he's transitioning now at the last part of verse 2 from the earth, and uh, he's going to start changing. And he says, you lead me, basically saying, lead me to the rock. You lead me. You lead me uh, to the rock. And which rock? But but you have to think first. Lead me too, because this is always the case. If God, if the scriptures ever are talking about leading you somewhere, it's also understood that He's leading you from something. Okay. <clears throat> so 
lead me is a good thing. But again, he's dependent on the Lord to do that. And I understand that. But we'll see where he transitions to as he goes here. Um, lead me to the rock, which means lead me from the earth and the, the way that I'm viewing things there. And he's doing that because he's, he's asking to be led to a rock that's higher than I or higher than me. And, um, and in being higher than us, this is saying, okay, you know, I'm in the earth, I'm crying out, verse 1. Now at the latter part of verse 2, get me out of here. Get me where you are. Lead me to the rock. Lead me to that which is higher than me because quite frankly, I can't handle it. I need something higher than me. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, then verse 3, we seem to be going through this fast, so we, we may be finished in five minutes. Uh, verse 3 says, For thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower from the enemy. Okay, so um, he's, he's looking for answers. He's looking for that which is higher than him. But this verse talks about there's something for me and there's protection from something. Okay, so the, the, the thing that is for me is the shelter and the thing that is a protection is from the enemy and it's God as a high tower, a strong tower actually is what it, it's described as. And... But this is, this is, listen to the wording again, for thou hast been. Okay, he's referring to something in the past. And, you know, I think there's a place to, to rest on things that the Lord has done in the past. But I think when you're in distress and everything, <clears throat> um, what you need is the living God. What you need is the real one right now. But he's transitioning, so let's give him a break. Okay, so he's, he's saying, thou, For thou hast been, this is only verse 3 now, For thou hast been a shelter for me. You have been a shelter for me. Okay, and a strong tower from the enemy. So he's talking about what has been, past tense, that God has been for him. All right. Still, now he's going to keep on transitioning. He is going to transition like crazy through this short psalm. And when I was trying to share on Sunday, probably sounded like I was an idiot was because I was going so fast and I only had a small little amount of time. Uh, verse 4. <clears throat> I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. All right. So... Um, this is a, this is a contrast to verse one. Um, in, uh, 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 verse one, he talked about, you know, hear my prayer, attend unto, you know, my cries. But here now he's using the word thy. He has, he's transitioning a little more. Now he's not looking at what he's doing or what he can do to get this thing changed. He's, he's looking at the Lord, or at least at what the Lord has done. So, I will abide in thy tabernacle. I'm going to abide in thy, your tabernacle. And I will trust in the covert of thy wings. And that's the little fold right there. That's, it's um, similar to the cleft of the rock. It's a place where we're hidden in him and safe and that sort of thing. Um, so he's going to abide now, which didn't sound like he was in verse 1, but it's going to be in what is the Lord's, his tabernacle, his house. I'm going to, I'm going to abide in your house. And then it, uh, I'm going to trust in your wings. Okay, I'm going to trust in your wings, but if it's like the cleft of the rock, it's really trusting in his wounds. You could say trusting in the cross in that sense. Okay, so in this verse, in verse 4, he's moved to trusting in what is settled, his house, his wounds, and, and from there, he's finding more peace 
but you know, we, we have to see what that transition has actually been up to this point. Um, he's brought to what's, what's settled, and he's brought from his cries and his prayers from where he needed to be led to something, from where he was, and he's all messed up, from his past with the Lord. Uh, that's verse 1, verse 2, and verse 3 those three froms. And now verse 4, he's being led to the provision um, that is his, that is his in the Lord. All right. Well, we would <clears throat> assume that that's, that's good. Okay. We can stop. <laughs> um, you know, I was crying. I was praying. And now I'm trusting and I'm... Uh, as it were, abiding, that both those words are used, and that that's where he wants us to be. But we're still only in, just finishing up verse 4, we're only halfway through the psalm. What can come next? What possibly could happen to help me go further? I'm happy here. I think I'll just stay here. No, don't stay there. Don't camp. Don't camp there. There's more. So, <clears throat> verse 5. Uh, so now he, he brings up the vow things and the, and I believe the things because he's bringing, I believe he's bringing up the, the vows two different times in the next bunch of verses. He's bringing it up <clears throat> because that's what was on his heart and that's why he was crying out unto God. Okay. So that's a big deal to him right here. For thou, O God, this is verse five now, for thou, O God, hast heard my vows, thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. All right, so um, if he has failed in his vows to God, he has realized, he's realized something new, something new, something more than just I've failed in my vows to God. Uh, he's beginning to become, become more aware of everything from God's perspective instead of our crisis situation in the earth, okay? So God has heard his heart. And even in those vows that he failed, God heard his heart in the spirit of what he was giving. And, they, and if this is David's psalm, which I don't really remember if it is or isn't, um, he's, he's heard his heart and he's treating him as if um, thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. He didn't say, he's given me the heritage that I earned because I kept your vows. He's not, he isn't even anywhere near. He still, he knows that he failed. He knows what he's done wrong, but his hope isn't in himself. His hope is now in the heart of the Lord, and he's hearing the heart of the Lord. For thou, O oh God, has heard my vows, thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. In other words, God heard his heart, and he treated him as if he is one of those that fear his name. Okay, why would he do that? Because God's gracious. No, no, no. There's, there's more to our Father than just being gracious. There's more to Christianity than just grace. <laughs> okay. Still with me? Still glad I'm sharing this blog today? Uh, so he's getting the same heritage that those who have been faithful are, have gotten. And um, then it, this whole thing is causing him to refocus. It's causing, a, and it's another refocus. It's another transition that's going on here. Um, it causes him to refocus. And now he's moving from the last thing that we discussed in verse 4, God's provision, thy tabernacles, thy care, you know, all the things that you have done. Uh, and now he's moving from the rest in his provision to just him. To just him. <clears throat> So we see that in verse 6. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and 
his years as many generations. So instead of being about his failures now, it's about the king's life. And uh, it's not failure and then, okay, I failed and that's the end of life and that's the end of everything. But he's saying that the king's life continues. Where is that king's life located? Well, we'll get that in the next two verses. But it's located in us. He's, Christ is in us. The king is in us. Um, we have something greater than our prayers. <laughs> we have something greater than our being good or, or, or not ever doing anything wrong. We have him. We have the king within us. And he's, he's, he's reckoned us as those that are faithful and haven't failed in relationship to their vows. So it's not failure and then that's the end, but it's his life continues. So in verse 7, we pick that up more. <clears throat> he shall abide. This is, he is not talking about himself anymore. He's not talking about what God has done for him anymore. He's talking about the one who abides and that will, you know, remember he said earlier that he will I will abide in your tabernacle. Now he's going, he abides. I won't even abide in your tabernacle without him, without his life. I'm useless I mean, in that sense, you know. Um, and so he's discovering. He's, he's coming out. He's like, a, he's like a, a seed that was dying and now it's breaking out of the dirt and it's pressing up towards the sun and it's reaching and it's saying the sun is the thing that's giving me life and health and all of this. And so, um, so he shall abide before God forever. Well, I'm with the one that's the one. I'm, I'm one with the one that shall abide with God forever. <laughs> so, now he changes his prayer. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. He's not trying to, you know, oh, attendant to my prayer. Here, preserve me. No. No, I have a cross for you. But he's going to come forth and you're going to be in him. Not just you individually getting help, but you having individually the life of Christ, just like all of us do is if we're born again. So, not mercy for me. Uh, like I wrote, please, Father, preserve his life in me, not my life. That's a good prayer. Amen? I'm going to say that one again, even if we run over a whole minute. Please, Father, this is this prayer now. Please, Father, preserve his life in me, not my life. Okay, and then verse 8. Um, and if you do that, uh, it says, So will I sing praise unto thy name forever. Well, if you do that, if you preserve his life, and, and you keep his life going, um, if you do, then what is he going to do? He's, I will sing, I will sing praise unto thy name. How long? Forever, forever, forever. Now I'm in eternity. See, now I'm not in the earth. Now I'm not in the flesh. Now I'm not struggling to get God to accept me. Attend unto my prayer. Now I'm just going to be singing to Him forever because that's where I'm at. I'm in eternity with Him. <clears throat> and so you, your last thoughts are, David's last thoughts are, uh, that, well, let's see where it is. I, so I will sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. And so by your life, I will be able to keep vows to God because he is faithful to God, because he's the one that's faithful, because because. The failures are to show that I'm corruptible, and the, uh, but, the, but greater than that, to lead me to the rock that's higher than me and put me there and let me realize that that same one is inside of me. I'm not just in him. 
he's inside of me. So that's it. How'd we do on time? <laughs> According to your little thing right there, we got 30 seconds. So I'm going to use it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's, it's just really a blessing to be with y'all. Why don't we just pray, okay? Father, we just do go through our things and we worry about our condition and we worry when we're doing good and then all of a sudden we mess up or and Father, we don't want we don't want to mess up, but on the other hand, you know that we are a mess. And that's why you put Christ in us, not just put Christ in heaven and us in him. You put him in us. And Father, I thank you for David if he's the one who wrote this psalm because he, he, we get to see him wrestle through until he's firmly um, sufficient by Christ in him, his hope of glory. And uh, we can see all the steps of the verses where we struggle too. And then we get to a place and then we camp before we go all the way through. We camp with your provision and what you have or what you have done in the past instead of who you are right now and how you want to live in us so we ask you to continue to bring us bring us forth again like that flower pressing towards the sun breaking out of the dirt and finding something so big and so that rock is a sun <laughs> and it's so wonderful to bask in in the light of his life, in the light of his glory, and that, Father, you would get the glory from Jesus. So we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. Love you guys.